to this video on what I would consider the four pillars of being a successful freelancer in the classical music world. Um, freelancing can be quite difficult to navigate because you have to have all kinds of skills other than just being a great flute player. And a lot of times you learn these skills in real time, in real life, as you go. You don't learn them in advance. Um, and I navigated freelancing early on in my career by trial and error, and I learned a ton. So I want to pass on what I've picked up onto you. Let's get started. Versatility, number one, it's my editing skills. To me, versatility is the most important aspect of being a freelancer, especially as a flute player, because there are so many of us. Um, so if you think you are going to go out into the world after college, with the Nielsen Concerto under your belt and play principal flute and all the orchestras, um, I have bad news for you. <laughs> so you have to be willing to play many different instruments in the flute family, for starters. So of course you have to play piccolo. Um, I'm surprised by the number of people that's, young people that start out thinking they're never ever going to play piccolo. And they, it just won't, that's just not going to happen. Um, recorder, alto flute, tin whistle, whatever, all those things you have to be willing to do. So when you get called for a gig and they ask you, can you play slide whistle? Which actually just happened to me two months, maybe three months ago. Um, I said, absolutely. And so what you do then, um, you Google, what's a slide whistle? And then you buy it and then you learn it. Um, but you always say, yes, you can play recorder. Um, yes, you can play tin whistle, as long as it's reasonable within your um, capabilities. Just say yes and then figure it out later. But also non-playing gigs, I like teaching, uh, classroom teaching, if you're able to do that, if that comes upon you, um, to teach like a music history from music minors class and you've never done anything in the classroom before, just do it and or you find yourself being asked to be a director um, to have to conduct an ensemble of um, like a handbell choir or god knows what but you just do it you take that opportunity um, all opportunities are connected and also taking those playing opportunities on your instrument on your primary instrument that may seem uncomfortable which would be and this will always happen having to um, getting called to sight read a concert so um, that is an opportunity you just have to take. It's uncomfortable, feels risky, um, but you have to do it. So with that said, um, you also need to be a solid sight reader as a freelancer, and that's something you can practice. Number two, organization. Organization, of course, is very important, especially for a freelancer, because you are managing your own schedule all of the time and your schedule gets quite tricky all the time. So there's no HR department, there's no personnel manager, you are it. What often happens is you have layers of schedule that you need to uh, keep track of. So oftentimes there's a base schedule. If I just take um, my own experience, I had a base schedule. I was teaching a music history class at a community college. So that was a fixed thing twice a week. Um, that was fixed in my schedule. Then on top of that, I would have private students that are semi-fixed. Those you can move around to some degree. And then on top of that, I would have various orchestras, regional orchestras that I was a member of so that you have a season uh, calendar. So you put in those dates on top of that. And then you already start to see conflicts arise and you're gonna have to shuffle things around. Um, and then going to get called for gigs, or hopefully, um, um, at, at any time throughout throughout the year. So as you get called for something, um, gig you want to take, then you have to go back to your multi-layered -layer, schedule and prioritize. Do I want to take this? If I take this gig, that means I have to get a sub for my music um, appreciation, music history class. That means I need to shift around my students and then I either need to sub out of these other gigs or not and insert this. And so that's the layering of schedules that you'll be doing all of the time. The other thing that's important with the schedule is knowing when to sub out of a gig that you've accepted. This is very tricky and, 
and is important to know how to do. It can be a delicate situation. So if you've accepted a gig and then you get a better gig um, or one that you want more, it's closer to town or it pays more or whatever, it's a better orchestra or whatever, you really need to know and what you're risking. So if you've subbed out of this one orchestra too many times and you sub out again to take this other one, you need to know that you're risking never being called back again for that. So um, there's just many things to consider when you when you sub out of one gig to take another one, but you will be doing that all of the time. The other thing with managing your schedule, just a few things is you never ever, ever can be late, never. So that's that. And then the other things, just a few other things are being very efficient with your time. So practicing long um, gone are the days of practicing two, three, four, multiple hours. If you did that in college, just, you just don't have time for that because you'll be driving in your car. So, and then in your car, you also need to um, manage your time there too, being efficient, maybe listen to podcasts, learn a language, um, do something because you will be in your car and about five hours a day, five hours, two hours get to a gig, two hours back, sitting um, in your car waiting for the gig to start because you drove two hours to get there and you're early, um, all this stuff's gonna happen. So efficiency of your time, managing your schedule is very important. Okay, number three is connections. Um, networking and connections is everything in the freelance world. Uh, you have to be connected to the people that are in the freelance scene that you want to be part of and then you also have to be connected to or know the people that do the hiring so the contractors or the people that influence the hires the principal flute of the orchestra you want to play in things like that um, and you have to let these people know that you exist and that you're interested they're not going to go find you you're not going to get discovered um, so you need to um, make sure you've communicated with them that you're interested in playing and the various gigs if they are just a general contractor. Um, one thing you can do for um, a regional orchestra that has a set principal flute and you want to be considered to be on their sub list um, is you can email that principal flute and um, ask to play for him or her to be considered to be on their sub list. That's a great um, general way most people get on the sub list of the various regional orchestras or different um, contracted out orchestras. Being connected and networking is much much easier now with social media so we know um, almost too much about everybody uh, now but it's still important to do to be connected to be visible uh, outwardly online and um, but more than that I think of uh, in the idea of under con connections is to have good people skills. So once you make those connections and actually get on the gig or, or communicate with people in time, in real time or online, is to have good just general people skills and not be a difficult person, not complain about things, just um, be very workable. Number four, location. This seems simple, but you, if you want to freelance, you have to live in a city with a freelancing scene. So uh, if you live in a very small town that's not in any way connected to a larger town, it's just, it's just not possible. So you need to be in a city that has a good freelancing scene. Um, generally, most big cities. Other things to note in looking for a location is a lot of cities if they might be small if they have a good music school um, attached to it or located there then usually that'll lend itself to um, a freelancing scene okay so we have all four of these uh, versatility being a versatile player open-minded organization managing your schedule connections being connected to people that do the hiring and just connected to other freelancers in general. And location, being in the location where there is freelancing. Those are all the four main most important aspects of freelancing, I believe. So I hope this advice helps. Uh, feel free to comment anything in the comment section, subscribe. I'll be making videos in more detail in each one of these. So I'll see you next time.